If you'd like to use Excel to get stock information or to calculate your portfolio value, you can do that directly from within Excel. You don't have to copy and paste or externally import this information. If you're an Excel 365 subscriber, you already have access to this. It's in the data tab in the group called data types. Now they're also referred to as rich data types. Now this can sound a bit strange, but it's gonna make sense in a second once you see it. So I'm gonna set up a stock portfolio and use the stock data type to get information about my portfolio and see how it's doing. Let's get to work. To set up the portfolio, I'm going to use data types in Excel. You can get there by going to data, data types, and we have the stock data type here. In addition, I have geography and organization. Now I'm using the 365 version of Excel. Notice when I hover over stocks here, it tells me it can convert cells with company names or ticker symbols like MSFT to get current stock info, like price exchange and more. So let's give it a try. I'll do what it says. I'm going to type in MSFT in there just to see what we get. Once you have the company name or the ticker symbol, click on stocks. This is going to try to convert this to a rich data type. Now, currently it's not converted because it has a question mark. It doesn't know which type of exchange we want. Is it the NASDAQ, San Diego, Wiener Börse, and so on. You can select the one that you need. So I'll go with the Microsoft Corporation here and I automatically get this little house or institute icon together with the name and the ticker symbol and the exchange. Now this here is a rich data type. This means that if I hover over this icon here, it tells me show card. Now when I click, I get a lot of information about this data more than what I see in the cell. So here I have the current stock price. Last trade time, the change, change in percentage, 52 week high, 52 week low, price earnings ratio, and a lot more. You can even see the number of employees, the headquarters and industry in here. Now, what if you wanted to add any of this information to your cells? Well, all you have to do is hover over this and you get this plus icon, extract price to grid, just click on it and we get the price on this side. If we wanna add more information, so you can go back here and add something else. So let's say this time I wanna get the high. So I'm just gonna click on the plus and it adds it to the next cell. Now notice when you go in that cell, you have a formula here. So all of this is dynamic, it equals B3 dot high. This means that you can write formulas to extract parts of this data as you need. So for example, if I go here and then put in the dot, I automatically get this drop down and I can make my selection. So if I want to see the number of employees, I'm gonna double click on employees, press enter, and I get that dynamically in there. If for some reason you type in something wrong or you're referencing a cell that's not a rich data type, you're gonna get a field error. So for example, if this was referencing before and I press enter, you get this. Okay, let's press Control Z to go back. Now, another way you can add additional information to the side is by clicking on this card up here. You then get your options shown in a list type of format. So I can add headquarters and it pops in automatically in here. Now, the good thing about this is that they don't have to be all together either. So you can have this sitting somewhere else. This can also be on another sheet. So I can press Control X here. Let's go to this sheet and press Control V and the information comes with. Okay, so now that we're clear on the basis of this, let's quickly set up our stock portfolio. Okay, so let's assume I have Microsoft. Now this time I'm just gonna type it in like this, Microsoft, then Google, I know the ticker symbol should be Goog, Amazon, and let's add the Royal Caribbean Cruise. Let's say I typed it in like this. 
Now I want these to turn into data types. I'm going to highlight this and click on stocks. It's going to try to figure it out for each one. Now it has correctly figured out these. For this one, it didn't get it right. So here on the side, I can try it again and let's see if it finds it like this. Now it gave me a selection. This is the one I want. I'm going to click on select. If you want another exchange and not, for example, the NASDAQ here for Microsoft, you can right mouse click, go to data type, change. And here you can update your text. You get different exchanges and then you can select them from here. In this case, I'm going to stick with NASDAQ. So let's close that. Now I've added my stocks. Let's say I want to get more information about all of this. I can select them all. Go to this card here and get, for example, the 52 week high. And I get that automatically for all the ones that I selected. If you want this to be dynamic so that you can add more stocks and everything updates automatically, it's best that you turn it into an official Excel table. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z to go back here, select my stocks and press Ctrl T or go to insert and insert a table. This table doesn't currently have headers, so I'm going to click on OK and update the header myself. Now you can also adjust the formatting of a table. So let's go and remove it so that we can add in our own. Go to home, make this bold, add a thick bottom border to this. OK, so now that this is a table, what I'm also going to do is update the name of the table, call it T stocks. I'm going to add more information to this. So click on the plus here and let's get the ticker symbol. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to T. Here's the ticker symbol and I get that automatically in there. Now I want to add in some inputs as well because I want to add information about the number of shares I bought and the buy price. So let's add those in shares. Notice it automatically is completing my sentence. It thinks that I want a part of this rich data type. If I just click on this and say, yes, that's what I want, it's going to retrieve it for me. But that's not what I want in this case. I want to input manually here. So I just want shares. Now this is going to be input. So let's highlight this and select the light yellow color here. Then I want to add the buy price. I want this to also be input. So let's apply the same color. Here is going to be my portfolio cost, which is going to be this multiplied with this and press enter. And because it's a table, it's using the table header name. So it's using structured referencing and automatically copying the formula down. I don't have to pull this down. This is calculated. So I'm going to update the color and make it light green. OK, so let me just add in my shares and the buy price for each share to get my portfolio cost. OK, so I've added my information in. Now let's also update the formatting of this. What we want to do is get the current price of the stock. It would also be good to have the 52 week high and the 52 week low. So let's add that to our table. All we have to do is just go somewhere on this table until you get the card icon showing to the side, click on it and add what you need. I want the price. I also want to get the 52 week high and low. It's good information to have. So let's scroll up 52 week high and let's add 52 week low to this as well. So now that we have this information, let's calculate our portfolio value. I'm just going to make this smaller so that we can see it better on the screen. Here's going to be portfolio value, which is going to be the current price multiplied with the number of shares. The moment I press enter, everything is copied down automatically. Now I want to find out for my position, is it up or down? I need to compare the current portfolio value with my portfolio cost. So that minus this, and then I'll know if I'm making money currently or I'm losing money. So for the Royal Caribbean cruises, I've lost because they had a big drop in their prices. 
Now you can also add conditional formatting to this. So let's just highlight this, go to home, conditional formatting, and add a new rule. I want to format only cells that contain if the cell value is less than zero, I want to add a fill color that's in light orange and click on OK and OK. In this case, only this one got highlighted. Now let's also organize this a bit better so we can read these. Select this column under home, go and wrap the text. We can also add a total row to this. And since it's a table, I can easily do that by going to table design and placing a check mark here for total row. That got automatically calculated. I'm just going to update the color to the light green. Then I want to have a total for this one as well. So just click on the drop down beside it and select sum. Let's make that green as well. For portfolio cost, I also want to add a total. So in total, I am positive. But what if I want to add another stock to this? Well, because it's a table, it's really easy to do that. I'm just going to right mouse click here, go to insert table row below. Notice I automatically get filled here because the formulas are referencing this and I don't have any stock. Now let's say my stock is the American Airlines group. The moment I press enter, it tries to figure it out and it got it right. Everything was automatically added to this because it's a table. All I have to do is add my shares and the price I bought these shares at and I end up with a current negative balance. My conditional formatting was also automatically applied because it's a table. Whenever you need to refresh this, all you have to do is go somewhere here where you have your rich data types, right mouse click and refresh. It's going to pull over the newest information. You can also go to data and refresh all or refresh from here as well. Also, if you ever want to copy and paste a data type somewhere else, you can because all the rich data type information comes automatically with. If you don't want it as a rich data type and you just want to convert this to text, you can right mouse click, go to data type, convert to text. Now, one other thing I want to mention is the language of the stocks. It's not the same language as the language option that's connected to your ribbon. So originally this confused me because my ribbon language was English, but my stock information was in German. And that's because it's coming from somewhere else. If I go to file, more options here, under language, this is the language that your ribbon looks at. And this here is the language that the stock information look at. So if you want it in a different language, even though you have an English ribbon, you can select that from here. So that's how you can use stock data types to get more information about a company. Now it's not just related to stock information, but also some additional background information about the company. So this feature is available for Microsoft 365 subscribers and also for Excel on the web. Unfortunately, it's not available for older versions of Excel. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.